of the dreaded word problem. So what we're going to practice today is how to use equations to make sums easy, we'll say. So we're going to say it by looking at something called consecutive integer problems. So that's a typical type of problem you're going to be seeing today when we have numbers right in a row. So just to refresh you, integers are just a set of whole numbers and their opposites. So like negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc., etc. When I say numbers are consecutive integers, I'm looking for integers that are in a row, like 9, 10, and 11. Okay, so here's our problem that we're going to be working on first. The sum of three consecutive integers is 72. What are the integers? Okay, there's a lot of ways to do this problem. Um, guessing and checking, obviously, some division strategies, etc. But today we're going to learn how to approach it algebraically. So this is one option to do. Okay, representation of unknowns means like giving a variable to what we don't know. So I don't know what the first integer is, so I'm just going to call x the first integer. Okay, I don't know what the second integer e is either. I could give it another variable like y, but that might be a lot of work if I can think of it in terms of x, that will be better. So I know that these are integers in the row, so the second one should be one more than the first one. So I'm going to call x plus 1 the second integer. Now if I look for my third integer, that's going to be one more than my second integer, so it's going to be two more than my first integer. I'm going to call that x plus 2. It's going to be my third integer. If I try to write an equation for this problem, I'm going to set it up by saying, well, the sum of these, so sum in math, remember that means you're adding the answer to an addition problem. So I'm going to add, a good equation might be saying x plus x plus 1 plus x plus 2. That's going to equal my sum of 72. Okay, so this is a problem I can solve. I'm just going to go back. I'm going to combine all my like terms. It looks like I have x, x, x. So I've got 3x's plus 1 and 2, so plus 3 equals 72. I'm going to solve this just like a typical equation. So 3x equals 69. Then it looks like x equals 23. Okay, which is good. But I'm not done. Remember, this is a word problem, so I need to answer. My question says, what are the integers? So I'm looking for all three. x is just my first integer. That's 23. That means my second integer is x plus 1. That's 24. And my third one, x plus 2, that's 25. So I think they're 23, 24, and 25. And if I'm going to be smart, I need to double check this and say 23 plus 24 plus 25. That really is 72. So that's good, my answer is correct. Now remember, this is just one way to solve the problem, but we're going to be looking at setting up equations for all our problems today. That's more important than getting the right answer, is getting the right equation in this context of algebra. Okay, so the sum of two consecutive even integers is 174. What are the two, what are the integers? So I want you to try this problem on your own and then come back and I'll show you how I would solve it. Okay, so I know the sum of two consecutive integers is 174. I'm going to call the first integer x again. The second integer is 2 more because it's even, so if like the first one was 6 and the next one would be 8, so I'm going to call x plus 2 the second integer. And when I'm writing my equation, I'm going to say x plus x plus 2 equals 174. Combine my like terms. 2x plus 2 equals 174. If I subtract 2 from both sides, I'm going to get 2x equals 172. And then if I divide by 2, I'm going to get that x equals 86. And remember, I'm not done. That 86, that's just my first integer. 88 should be my next integer. And so it, together, it could be 86 plus 88. That really does equal 174, so that's good. These are my two integers, okay? Now just think about this. How would you represent consecutive odd integers? Hey, if you tell me tomorrow in class, I'll give you a tip, okay? 
Um, okay, we're also going to look at a lot of geometry problems. When you see a geometry problem, I highly encourage you to try to draw a picture because that usually gives you a lot of an idea of what's going on here. So this problem says the width of a rectangle is three less than its length. So I definitely want to draw a picture here. Um, the width is three less than its length. So I don't know what its length is, but I'll call that L. And I'm going to call its width three less than L, so L minus three. And I know that the perimeter is 26 inches. So remember to find perimeter, we're going to add up all the sides. So you might just want to draw, put another L in here and another L minus three. So my equation, I'm going to say that L plus L minus three plus L plus L minus three. You could be smart and do like two times L plus two times the quantity L minus three if you want. That has to equal 26. Okay, I'm going to combine my like terms again. I've got four L's here, minus three and minus three, so that's minus six equals 26. Solve it like a normal equation. I'm going to add six to both sides. I'm going to get 4L equals 32. Now I'm going to divide both sides by 4, and I have L equals 8. Notice I'm not done with my problem. I just have what L equals. So L is 8. That means L minus 3 seems to be 5. And it would be good to double check that 8 plus 5 plus 8 plus 5 really does equal 26. So this asks the length and the width. I'm going to say the length equals 8 inches, and the width equals 5 inches. And it does seem like I have it right. Okay, so again, I want you to try this one on your own and see if you can get it. And then come back and just check with what I do. Okay, so the width of a rectangle is 1 half its length. So again, I don't know the length, but I'm going to call it L. And the width is half of it, so I'm going to say half of L. Half of L. And I know that the perimeter is 54 centimeters, and I'm trying to figure out the length and the width. So again, I'm going to add L, L, and half L, and a half L, which is 3L, the perimeter, should equals 54. If I do 54 divided by 3, I get that L equals 18. Okay, so 18 is my length. Half of L, that's 9. 9 should be my width. If I check 18, 9, 18, and 9, it looks like I do get a perimeter of 54. So it looks like length is 18 centimeters and width is 9 centimeters. Okay, now it's time for the toughies. I consider these tough problems. I remember struggling with them when I was in Algebra 1. Um, so we'll talk. We'll try to get you good at these, but I'm just telling you now it's going to take a lot of practice. So we're going to look at distance, rate, and time problems. It is important for you to know, and you probably know this from science class, that distance always equals rate times time. Okay, so rate times time always equals distance. So let's look at this problem. An airplane left an airport flying 180 miles per hour. A jet that flies at 330 miles per hour left one hour later. The jet follows along the same route as the airplane at a different altitude. How long will it take the jet to catch up to the airplane? Okay, so I think these type of problems are easiest to set up if you write a chart. If you make a rate times time equals distance, and if you like kind of put that for yourself and know that we're comparing an airplane here and a jet. Okay, so I cannot draw an airplane, so I'm just going to call this A for my picture. Here it goes. It's driving, I mean flying, 180 miles per hour. And then the jet, here it is, it leaves later, but what you want at a different altitude, you're trying to get it to catch up to the airplane. So look at this. You want them to have gone the same distance. That's going to be key. Okay. So let's think about that in this context. So an airplane left an airport flying 180 miles per hour. We know that's its rate. That's the easiest part of the table to figure out. A jet that flies at 330 miles per hour, it leaves one hour later. So we know their rate's 330. And our time, these are miles per hour, so it's probably good if we put our time in hours. I don't know how long my airplane's been going, um, so I could call that x if I wanted any variable. All I know is that my jet is leaving one hour later. So think about this, like if the airplane flies for five hours, 
The jet's leaving an hour later, but they're ending at the same time, so it only flies for four hours. It's going x minus one. Okay, and remember that distance is rate times time. So I'm going to say 180 times x, 180x, is the airplane's distance. And for the jet, its distance is 330 times the quantity x minus one. And because I know that the airplane and the jet end up going the same distance based on my wonderful drawing, I can say that my equation is 180x must equal 330 times the quantity x minus 1. Okay, so I'm going to try to solve this. It looks like I'm going to need to use the distributive property. Probably be a good way to do this problem. So it looks like 330x minus 330 equals 180x. And it seems like it would be pretty smart to get all my variables on one side. So I'm going to subtract 330x from both sides. Looks like I have a negative 150x equals negative 330. And it's time to divide. So when I divide this, I get that x equals 2.2. Okay, and remember I had written these in hours. And it looks like this problem here, x is my airplanes. So that's 2.2 hours. And it looks like my jet is x minus 1, so it should be 1.2 hours. And it asks how long the jet's going to take to catch up to the airplane, so the jet's going to be going 1.2 hours. And that's a good answer that I want. Okay, and it's always really smart to double check, like if the jet goes for 1.2 hours at 330 miles per hour, 1.2 times 330, it's gone 396 miles. And I want to know if that's how long the airplane's going to go in 2.2 hours. So if I do 180 times 2.2, I'm going to get 396 miles, and they match, so that's a good sign. Okay, so 1.2 hours looks to be the correct answer. Okay. All right, if you try, you can try to give this one a try. It's a distance rate time problem, but it's a, a, a little bit different. Um, give it a try, but don't worry if you have to come back and see what I do to figure it out. So here it is. Suppose you hike up a hill. I'm comparing up a hill and down a hill. You hike up a hill at four kilometers. You hike down at six kilometers. Okay, so zoop up the hill down the hill. Oh, look, you're going up the hill and down the same hill, so it looks like once again our distances are going to be equal. Okay, so we are hiking up. We do not know how long it's taking us, so I'm going to call it x again. Okay, but this is where it gets tricky. All you know is all together your hiking trip takes three hours. So like if it takes you two hours to go up, it's going to take you one hour to come down. If it takes you 1.5 hours to go up, it's going to take you 1.5 hours to come down. You can get that by doing three minus whatever the up time was. So our down time is going to be three minus x. Okay. To get our distance, I'm going to multiply again because remember rate times time equals distance. So our distance up a hill is 4x. Our distance downhill is 6 times the quantity 3 minus x. And I'm going to set up an equation that says 4x equals 6 times the quantity 3 minus x. Again, I'm probably going to use distributive property to say 4x equals 18 minus 6x. Okay, add 6x to both sides. I'm going to get 10x equals 18. If I divide both sides by 10, I get x equals 1.8. And that was my up the hill, so it looks like 1.8 hours is the answer I'm looking for. I'll leave that as an exercise for you to double check, because we need one more tough problem to do. Okay, so here we go. Two jets leave Dallas at the same time and fly in opposite directions. So here they are. Here's Dallas. One jet is going, we'll say, east, and the other jet is going west. So one is flying west 50 miles per hour faster than the other. And after two hours, the jets are, are 2,500 miles apart. So we got the west jet and the east jet here. I don't know their rates this time. I just know that the one west is 50 miles per hour faster, so I'm going to call that x plus 50. East, I'm going to just call that x. I know both of their times are 2. And I know their distances is rate times time, so 2 times x plus 50, and this is 2x. The tricky thing about this problem is that those distances are not equal. All I know is they're 2,500 miles apart. So my equation should look like 2 times x plus 50 
plus 2x equals 2,500. You'll have to solve that on your own.